Hello and welcome to this video. This video is going to be about the piano roll, okay? And this is probably one of the most important things that I use in FL Studio, so you should pay attention and sit up straight and take notes or something. I don't know. Listen, so basically, the piano roll is where you make all your melodies, okay? Because it's like a roll of piano, which is quite a good name, really. Um, if you don't want it in this gay way and you actually are a musician, you can press ABC and it will change. Don't, oh, God. Back to there, and you can see the notes, which is how I do it. If, you, if you're not really a musician and you just know what notes are, as in like the letters, and you know what letters are, and you're literate, you know, you can do it that way, you can do it that way, that's fine. Um, so let's just say, um, I want to give you a bit of an example. This is like a timeline, so each one of these represents a bar, okay? And if you have a sample and you do a different note, it's going to give you a higher pitch. Of the snare, which is quite cool. Not just the snare; it depends on the sample, but you know, you know what I mean. Um, so yeah, that's that. Um, and you got all these sexy tools, which are the same for the playlist, and talk about that later. So you've got select tool, which you select all that. You've got the paint tool, which you can go and just paint, which is not really painting; it's kind of doing whatever. Anyway. Um, so yeah, that's basically the stuff. You got all these different tools. You got the zoom tool. Um, I usually just do page down and that zooms or page down and page up, zoom in and out for me. I don't really do the whole thing. I like to do, introduce sh shortcuts and good habits early for you guys so that you are producing quicker and not less time fumbling around and more time making music. Okay, so this has got the same snap feature as all of all of these bars, and you got to make sure that you put yours on because if you put it on none and you start going. Sh -sh -sh, these are going to be out of time because if you look, these cuts is like each one of these lines is like a cut where it's going to be in time. And if I did this and I put a metronome on it, this is how you test if things are in time, by the way. If you put the metronome on, oh my god, you do not that's like the worst thing you can do. So don't do that, honestly, just don't do that. So you want to be making sure that your snap is on the right one, just depending on what you're making. There isn't really a right one, there's just ones that are useful and ones that are not. So make sure you set that right. Okay, um, so there's a few other tools that you can do, which I always do. So let's just say I made a 4x4 four four snare, and that was my song. Um, but I wanted to chop it up. Um, I will show you the shortcuts, or I tell you them because they're quite nice. But if you do Control A, you can select all of that pattern in there, or if you do Control and then drag, you can select as much or as little as you want. And that's actually snapping because of the snap tool. So if I go to B, um, it'll it'll snap to the beat like that, which is quite cool. Um, just so you guys know what's actually happening, um, instead of just like, whoa, what's going on? I don't know what's going on. So that's what I don't want. Um, so basically, yeah. You can do the chop tool. Chop's really nice. And you've got all these different chop, like millions and millions of different chops. I The only one I use is offbeat in, in default because I like to make music and I don't like to use other people's work ever really in this. It's all right, but it's, I know, I just don't do it. So um, you can play with this. And as you can see, it's making the notes bigger and smaller and bigger and smaller and bigger and smaller and bigger and smaller. And if you're not happy with it, you can just do reset or you can just click close and it will bring you back to what you were originally. Which is quite cool because, you know, sometimes you don't want to do stuff and sometimes you do. So there's also other stuff like arpeggiate and you can have a little play with that. I never use this, I just create my own arpeggios. It's better to do that because, you know, you're actually understanding on a musical level. But if you want to do that, you can do that. There's no, you know, there's no restriction. Um, most of this is just little preference stuff this is I basically explained to you the the majority of it um yeah so so that's that there is helpers the one thing that I do have is ghost channels and that basically means that if you have like two or three different um patterns going um two or three different instruments going on in that pattern remember these are patterns um you got pattern and song mode um remember these are if these are ghost channels it'll show you what the other notes are playing in the background 
um, as like their ghosts. That's kind of why they're called ghost channels. Um, and then you can kind of build your melodies around that. And we're going to go into some theory and stuff so you guys kind of understand melodies a little bit better. Um, there's also there's loads of features on here, but um, you know most of this stuff I don't use. The only one that I do use is Open Score. If I've made a score before, or you know this is one like Excelente. I don't know what that is. You know, just a little melody stuff that I've made. I can just bring it in fast. Obviously, it doesn't sound good on the snare like in three octaves higher than it normally is. But there you go. So that is the video on the piano roll. Um, I hope you enjoy and get ready for the next one.